The second you look at your phone, the second you turn your TV on, you're in a battle. I want to win the war in the morning. If you do something you don't want to do every morning, you're already giving yourself the proper self-talk to attack the people that don't like you, to attack your insecurities, to attack what the world's going to give you. I once had that mentality that no one understands what the f I'm going through. And if you keep that mentality, you're going to stay in the same exact spot that you're in. Everybody's going through so when people get this mentality of like, you don't understand me, you can throw a rock to someone that can understand you if they're willing to break themselves down and stop hiding. A lot of people understand you, but you gotta stop hiding. When that alarm clock goes off at four or five in the morning, your mind says no. You just say, this is what we do. It's what we do now. Because to get to where you wanna go, the amount of pain involved, I'm not saying physical, I'm not saying you gotta break yourself off. The amount of mental pain of how many times you're gonna have to do something that you don't want to do. Tripling down on your strengths and don't worry about your weaknesses. If anybody out there knows who I am, I totally disagree with all of that crap. I think it's crap and that's exactly how the people in the world become weaker people. It's by capping your brain, it's by putting this kind of garbage in it about not attacking what you're not good at. It's about putting a cap on managing your expectations. If I lived that way, if I had any kind of thought process like managing expectations, I would be a 400 pound man by now working some job that made no money and I would not never know my capabilities. I would never have become a Navy SEAL. I never went to ranger school. We all want to read about how we can quickly get somewhere. That's why the six minute abs and all sorts are so powerful. You may get some results from it, but they're not permanent. The permanent result comes from you. You have to suffer. The only way you're ever going to get to the other side of this journey is you have got to suffer, to grow. To grow, you must suffer. And some people will get it and some people won't but they have to see what their journey is to start their journey. Several people live to be 100 years old and they have great lives. Motivation is crap. It comes and go as how you feel. No one's gonna come back to save me. No one's gonna come back on this couch and say, hey, it's okay. You're gonna be okay. No, I'm not. When your life is hard and life is coming at you, you will panic and you will forget who the you are. Because in the worst of times you are alone you must get your self out of the sewer no one's coming in the sewer to get you it's dark it's nasty there's rats down there it's your brain you are the only person that can pull yourself out not getting civilized is about having a savage mentality it's the worst thing that could ever happen to any human being is they become civilized with that total accountability like even when you retire there's a mother looking at me and judging me right now man i'm i was the baddest person to ever live it doesn't go away man you gotta wake up even though you're retired you never retired you're setting the example every single day of your life and being civilized feels so good i'm sorry man triple down on your weaknesses find out something about yourself you already know that the good you already know the half why don't you talk about good times you know how to get through that <laughs> mother you can help yourself get through the times that suck real life this is real life 90 percent of your life will suck 10 percent will be unhappy you may be lucky guy and have a lot of money have a great ass woman all this trust me one-on-one -on -one guy he's missing something his life still sucks because he hasn't faced something that bothered him his whole life something is still eating that mother up you're not grinding hard enough if, if you're worried about something that someone did to you years ago, you're being a put to yourself, man. You're not getting out there and squeezing that fucking soul out every day. If you grind hard, man, I ain't got time to worry about your monkey ass. I ain't, I ain't got time to worry about you, man. Because tomorrow, I got to go back to the grind. And tomorrow, I go back to the grind again and again and again and again. I don't have time to put you into the hate bank. There's no hate. It's all filtered out, man, through the grind. People don't get it. There's, there's great joy in the grind great joy to suffer it's, it totally cleanses your body out man of any kind of hate makes you grow up i didn't have any 
I was a, I was a really weak kid. My dad beat the living shit out of me and took every, I was strong as a young kid. But me protecting my mom for so many years in that house, my dad made me very afraid because he beat the shit out of me every time we that. So in that, I want, every man wants courage. Every man wants strength. At least this one does. So I found it in every way possible. And when I see a strong guy, I was like, okay, maybe he can teach me. So he didn't know anything about me. So time went on, I left school, and then this guy was in my mind. We suffer, we suffer every day. It's what we do. We do stuff that sucks every day. So then when the suck stuff comes, you're ready for it. And that's how I started coming up. You know, I just started being very uncomfortable. And now it's like a, just a way of life. What I realized is for me to become the man I wanted to become, I saw myself as the weakest person God ever created. But I never blamed God for anything he did to me. So I wanted to change that to be the hardest man ever created. Am I that? I don't know, but you had to have a goal. And my goal when I was sitting there, not going to school, being bullied, being having no self-esteem, my goal was the only person that's gonna turn this person around is me. The only way I can turn it around is put myself through the worst things possible a human being can ever endure. And that'd be the only way that I can build this brain to handle anything that comes in front of it, callousing my mind through pain and suffering. Every morning starts with a run. And that's because that's the one thing I hate to do more than anything in the world. So that's like my cup of coffee. And I'm all about armoring yourself. So the second you leave your house, and the second you open your phone, the second you do any of that shit, you are now letting in poison and cancer. So I make sure a lot of things you can't avoid. So as I get up, I start to armor plate my mind and body. And discipline's good too. But without a clear headspace, there's no discipline. What do you mean? So let's say we have a circuit break, okay? And I'm loading everything up to one circuit. Just load it up. It's gonna blow. And once that thing blows, man, the circuit's all fucked up. You gotta have each thing plugged into the right spot, like a crowded garage. You can't put anything in it. Once your brain is crowded, discipline is great. Motivation is great. But if you can't fit shit in your brain because it's all cluttered with shit, there's no discipline. You may have it sometimes when it fits in that crowded garage of your mind, but you don't have the consistency that you need to have with that discipline. And people don't get that. Your mind has to always be clear. That's why I, that's why I meditate two hours every single night because I refresh, I reorganize the garage, which is my mind, every night. So then discipline's in there, organization, everything is in this right spot. So when I wake up, I'm ready to go. So I take a lot of passion in who I am as a person. As you hear, as this podcast gets going and going and going, what you're gonna do is you're gonna transform me from this guy right now that's kind of chilled out in this room, David Goggins to Goggins. And I had to invent this person. David Goggins is an introverted, um, soft kid that got beat up growing up and mindset, had, had to lie to create friends, to get friends, to be accepted. My, my life has really been about two people. Very scary, but two people. I had to invent a whole other human being to get outside of my comfort zone. And that human being became Goggins. For live. And I had to, I just kept fueling me with the, with, with the right kind of message that I needed to hear that I was never telling myself. And through time, it became reality to myself. Break down situations very quickly within some trauma in your life, some devastation in your life, because it's gonna come. The devastation, the trauma is gonna come, and you can't allow that to become a jersey barrier. It can't be a jersey barrier. It has to be something that you can maneuver through very quickly and move forward. That takes a lot of toughness. Man, when you give what I've given, I've given everything. People make, oh, you, you ran off up knees, you taped your feet up, you did blah, blah. You had two heart surgeries, you kept on going, which makes me who I am. We all look for toughness. We all want it. 
but we look for it in a comfortable environment. You will not find toughness in a comfortable environment. Yep, sure did. I had somewhere to go. I got there. And buddy, when mother tell you, you can take a break now? Hey, you're fucked up? As long as my knees are halfway working, I got to run. You telling me maybe may, may a chance I can't run no more? Hmm. Give me an excuse to not do it, but as long as I have no excuse, I got to do it. I was happy where I was. I gave everything. I gave everything to who I am. And that's why I'm, people, oh, I don't believe that. Don't, don't believe it. I gave everything. You have no regret. People didn't understand me. People don't understand me now. I don't give a f I know exactly what I was doing. I'm not a masochist. I'm not crazy. I'm not this and that. People try to title me and label me. No. I had something can do. It's like our minds are like a garage. And the garage, you, if you open a garage and it's all cluttered up, you can't put your car in there. You got boats and you got kids' toys and shit everywhere. But if you organize that garage and you put everything in its rightful spot, you can pull that car in there. You can put two cars in there. You can put bikes in there. And that's like with the mind. People talk about discipline, determination, repetitions, and all this shit. Consistency. There's no room in that mind for discipline. There's no room for consistency. They may do it once or twice, but then the mind takes over and that garage comes in. And then it's like a circuit breaker, man. A circuit breaker just overloads and barks. And our minds, that's, that's our mind, man. It's like a circuit breaker that has so much shit in it, you keep on loading it, you can't put any more into it. I talk about it in there, man, so much about clearing space in your mind. So then you have room for all those discipline. Waking up early, taking those, they do mean something. But we don't get to that dark matter that is keeping you from clearing out that mental garage. I wanted you to go home that night after you beat the living shit out of me and I smiled in your face. I wanted you to feel worse than I did and you were going home to a nice warm bed and I was still out there in the grip suffering for another 100 hours. I wanted you to think about me knowing that I'm comfortable being very unfucking comfortable And I want you to think about when you went through fucking Hell Week, how uncomfortable you were and how bad you wanted to quit, knowing I'm not thinking that fucking way. So the dark side is something that I've designed. It's an evil place I can go that very few things can hurt me. We all have two people. We all have two people. And I'm not saying you're crazy. We have the easy voice, which is that 20% telling yourself that you're, I'm easy at 90% of my full potential, maybe 100% at that 20%. That's that voice that we all love. That's that very comfortable voice that, that's that mommy holding you saying, it's gonna be okay. Doesn't care how good you are, just loves you. Just loves you no matter how messed up you are in life. That's where you wanna be at. So that's that one voice. This other voice that we walk very far away from is a voice saying, hey man, you ain't doing it. So we try to get this voice out of our head completely. And we live over here in this land. So what you have to do first is turn up this voice over here. We all like to take this four lane highway. The easy highway it has, it has signs, it has restaurants. We all love that four lane highway. We always step over the shovel. And all I did was I picked up that shovel and that shovel, I made my own path. And you may have big boulders and shit. They may be getting 200 miles up the road faster than you. But going through this path of life, this journey over here that you make yourself, that's incredibly difficult. When it comes out the other end of that mother there's some glorious shit that you can't even explain to people. We count on people too much to get us through shit. And we look to our right, we look to our left, we're looking for help. And if you can build that self, you can build that total accountability in oneself. And it's not about being selfish. I'm trying to create a better me and your brain is the most powerful weapon. I talk about that in one of these chapters. Your brain is the most powerful weapon in the world. Once you put away your phones and your computers and all that we have nowadays, that's yeah, great. We're up to date, you, you know, you, but your brain is the only thing you have when you're going through depression, when, you, when you're going through hard times, when you're going through death, real life. Sh you can't Google that. You're alone. 
You're alone. You may have a shrink you're going to. You may have a best friend you're going to. But there's 24 hours in the day where you're alone in this brain. And your brain is talking to you in all kinds of ways. And it wants to control you and pull you in these different pockets. If you can't control your own brain and your brain controls you, you're f***ed. You got to tell your brain where you want to go and how you want to go and how you want to get there. You got to control it. If not, it's over. I'm trying to find more of myself. And the only way I can find more is to silence the world out as much as I can because it's, it's, it's getting busier every day. It's getting faster. And the faster it gets, the more you are missing who the f*** you are. So I trap my own mind a lot and say, look, man, I put my phone away, I put it away, and I go dark. I go dark a lot, and it's because I have to find out. I'm on a journey of life, and we all have a different journey. I learned how to really find strength in the misery. When everybody's suffering, everybody's all poopy pants and their mentality's down and everything, I started just like, my God, this is where I shine. And I started using all that misery for tons and tons of tons of drive and motivation to, to, to then lead people further. Because you can get a lot of power through misery. And once people see that, my God, Goggins is going. Then everybody says, Roger that. Let me get my sh and go too. So I started realizing that if you can just find strength just a little bit longer, you will have a crew of people following you along the way. Let me sit here and enjoy this pain. She said, what are you talking about? I go, I need to go to the doctor. I realized that. But I never thought it was humanly possible to do what I did. I went 70 miles. At 70 miles, I was dead. I was at 100%, what I thought was 100%. I went 31 more miles after being in the worst physical shape I've ever been in in my life. All that pain and suffering and thing was going through my body. And I sat in that tub and, and, and the waters hit me. And it was the most amazing feeling of accomplishment. And I want to be numb. I want people to give me drugs in the, in the numbness pain. I wanted to, I did this. As crazy as it sounds, it was the most amazing moment of my entire life. You have to create the real reality. So that's what I call my accountability mirror in my book. That's the real reality. Where the fuck am I going to start from? So for me, I was lying to this, lying about that. So I had no starting point. Once you come face to face with who you are, you have a starting point. All right. <laughs> I'm not real smart. I have no courage. I have no self-esteem. I have no nothing. Nothing. That's my starting point. Now we can move from there. But if I tell myself I'm strong, I have courage, I'm smart, and all these are lies, you continuously push that starting point backwards. So that starting point is the truth. The no bullshit truth that only you can tell yourself. It gives you a lot of power when you're able to go on a podcast this big and say, hey, tell me, I'll tell you anything you want to know. I no longer care. There's a lot of power in that to be able to put your life on a billboard for the whole world to see and say, judge it, man. Judge it. Like just me talking about it makes me feel good. And that's, and that's another thing about it. When you are willing to talk about how jacked up you are, the strength, that big rock that you carry, it just starts to come off you. It just starts to come off. That's why I do it so often. I'm like, hey man, I'll tell you anything you want to know. I'm tired of being afraid. I'm tired of not telling you. I'm tired of lying about how good I'm not. The only way out for me at that time was death. If I die, so be it. All these guys around me, the stallions, the gladiators, they're all healthy. They're not broken like this. If I can start the hardest training in the world, broken, then graduate. You are now, from the weakest man, you are now the hardest man to ever live. If you, <laughs> if you can do this. Only those people who have been there a million times in their minds and have lived in that water and have suffered a million times and realize my legs may break, my knee may break, my bones will hurt. I will be the coldest I've been in my life. I will be miserable and accept that. Because what happens is in three months later, my stress fractures were healed by running on them. 
when the mind and the body connect and you don't give yourself a way out. The only way out for me at that time was death. I'm going to be a Navy SEAL or I'm going to die trying, period. And my body said, Roger that. We're going to get you through this. You need to look at someone's eyes. You know how it is when you fight somebody and you broke that. He's like, oh God, man, I don't want to go back to the next round. And you feel like, my God, I can fight all day. I can fight all mm. day long. That's what taking souls is. But you have to have the will, the heart, the courage to go that distance when you're exactly jacked up. You have nothing left to give and give more. Charging. And we start fueling off of that. We start fueling off the fact that, man, it takes one second of energy to steal everybody's. And then you have all the energy you need. That's all you need. You need to look at someone's eyes. You know how it is when you fight somebody and you broke that motherfucker. He's like, oh, God, man, I don't want to go back to the next round. And you feel like, my God, I can fight all day. I can fight all mm. day. About what you're saying to yourself, but it also comes at work. So whenever I was getting beat down physically, mentally, spiritually, whatever I was going through, just saying, you know, I would put, you know, you can't hurt me. Can't hurt me just became a message. I, you know, I would say to myself, and that's just kind of where it comes from. I learned how to control my adrenals. If you know how you know how you get that fight or flight response when you get to move real quick. Yeah. And you know, I, I started learning the mind a lot how to get myself jacked extremely fast. Like in a horrible environment when everybody's miserable. I learned how to really find strength in the misery. When everybody's suffering, everybody's all poopy pants and their mentality's down and everything. I started just like, my God, this is where I shine. And I started using all that misery for tons and tons of tons of drive and motivation to, to, to then lead people further. Because you can get a lot of power through misery. And once people see that, my God, God is going. Then everybody says, Roger that. Let me get my shit and go too. I started realizing that if you can just find strength just a little bit longer, you will have a crew of people following you along the way. You have to be open-minded to the possibilities that I can do this. Once you shut your mind down to the possibility that it can be achieved, there's no way it can happen. So that's why my, my eyes and my body light up about things. Because I know that if you're in a fight, you have to attack. You have to keep attacking. The enemy has to know he is not going to give up. You must break the soul of whatever the fuck is in front of you. That's what I realized. I was never breaking the soul of anything in front of me. I started to devise ways to break a soul of a human being, of, a, of an object, of, of, of whatever's in front of me. If you keep on attacking something, nothing wants to stand in front of anything that is relentless. Nothing. To take great pleasure in the fact that no one wants to be where the fuck you're at right now. Great pleasure in that. It has to bring a passion out of you. It has to bring something very, very weird out of you, man. Like, people don't really understand what that is. When you're in the worst environment possible, the worst situation possible, and everybody's looking like, God, man, I hope this ends. And you see that. Time slows down and you see that. You're, you're feeling that. Everybody has that look on their face like, God, this got to go. I don't want to be here anymore. And when I started realizing, I started playing mind games. And I was like, you know what? I bet these fuckers are looking at us judging themselves about when they were going through hell week about let me see i'm looking at goggins right now i was better than him and i was like okay okay you gotta judge me right <laughs> all right so that's what i'm gonna do to you they tell you how you're supposed to feel you are feeling that way i was like uh don't let these motherfuckers tell you how you're supposed to feel no it's day one mother this is our one so i was getting my boat crew all jacked up i said we're gonna take these mother for souls so when they had us doing this simple thing that guys were struggling with, I looked on the instructor's faces and it looked like someone had just f***ed with their soul. And I looked at my guys in my broker and I said, hey, guess what? We <laughs> own space in their f***ing head. We own space. They're going to think about us tonight. We start fueling off the fact that, man, it takes one second of energy to steal everybody's. And then you have all the energy you need. That's all you need. I learned how to control my adrenals. If you know how you know how you get that fight or flight response when you get to move real quick. Yeah. And you know, I, I started learning the mind a lot how to get myself jacked extremely fast. Like in a horrible environment when everybody's miserable. 
I learned how to really find strength in the misery. When everybody's suffering, everybody's all poopy pants and their mentality's down and everything, I started just like, my God, this is where I shine. And I started using all that misery for tons and tons of tons of drive and motivation to, to, to then lead people further. Because you can get a lot of power through misery. And once people see that, my God, God is going, then everybody says, Roger that. Let me get my shit and go too. I started realizing that if you can just find strength just a little bit longer, you will have a crew of people following you along the way. You have to be open-minded to the possibilities that I can do this. Once you shut your mind down to the possibility that it can be achieved, there's no way it can happen. So that's why my, my eyes and my body light up about things. Because I know that if you're in a fight, you have to attack. You have to keep attacking. The enemy has to know he is not going to give up. You must break the soul of whatever the is in front of you that's what i realized i was never breaking the soul of anything in front of me i started to devise ways to break a soul of a human being of, a, of an object of, of, of whatever's in front of me if you keep on attacking something nothing wants to stand in front of anything that is relentless nothing to take great pleasure in the fact that no one wants to be with the f you're at right now great pleasure in that it has to bring a passion out of you has to bring something very, very weird out of you, man. Like, people don't really understand what that is. When you're in the worst environment possible, the worst situation possible, and everybody's looking like, God, man, I hope this ends. And you see that. Time slows down, and you see that. You're, you're feeling that. Everybody has that look on their face like, God, this got to go. I don't want to be here anymore. And when I started realizing, I started playing mind games. And I was like, you know what? I bet these fuckers are looking at us judging themselves about when they were going through hell week about let me see i'm looking at goggins right now i was better than him and i was like okay okay you gotta judge me right, <laughs> All right. so that's what i'm gonna do to you they tell you how you're supposed to feel you are feeling that way i was like uh -uh. don't let these motherfuckers tell you how you're supposed to feel no it's day one mother this is hour one so i was getting my boat crew all jacked up i said we're gonna take these mother for souls so when they had us doing this simple thing that guys were struggling with, I looked on the instructor's faces and it looked like someone had just with their soul. And I looked at my guys in my book and I said, hey, guess what? We <laughs> own space in their head. We own space. They're going to think about us tonight. We start fueling off the fact that, man, it takes one second of energy to steal everybody's. And then you have all the energy you need. That's all you need. You need to look at someone's eyes. You know how it is when you fight somebody and you broke that. He's like, oh, God, man, I don't want to go back to the next round. And you feel like, my God, I can fight all day. I can fight all mm. day long. That's what taking souls is. But you have to have the will, the heart, the courage to go that distance when you're exactly jacked up. You have nothing left to give and give more. You cannot live in that normal mindset. You must be your best on your worst days. And how you do that is you cannot think of a normal mindset. You cannot have a normal mindset. It takes the growth in your mental aspect, in your spiritual, everything grows because you start feeling better about yourself. Not many things on the planet make you feel good about yourself, like getting after it, doing something that challenges you mentally and physically every day. My big takeaway of life is if you're constantly taking the easy way out, you never go callous your mind. I was a chameleon living in life who could barely get by. So I know that they were taking the normal mindset of people. They weren't talking about the one percenters, the people who want it like there's no tomorrow. The one thing that made me who I am today is being vulnerable. It's breaking myself down to the absolute rock bottom and being able to tell people who I am. And that's how I fixed it. Literally, you know, look somebody in the eyes, you know what, man? I have a whole bunch of character problems, character flaws. I've lied about this. I've cheated here. I'm insecure here. This isn't the real me. I lied to you about that. I wanted your acceptance in life. All those things happen. But the thing about it is that we get judged so quickly by who we are. We don't know. We don't go to, the, to where it happened. Everything I didn't want to do is what got me to where I'm at today. It's about what you're saying to yourself, but it also comes with work. So whenever I was getting beat down, 
physically, mentally, spiritually, whatever I was going through, just saying, you can't hurt me. Life created this person, me. And I had to realize, man, that's okay, man. It's not my fault. Now I gotta go back and fix it though. So a lot of this isn't your fault, why you do some things you do, why you feel the way you feel. But no one's coming back to save your ass. You have to go back to where they started, wherever that place is for everybody, and have the courage to go back there and start fixing what broke you. I was just an insecure, scared kid. But the best thing that happened to me, no one helped me. So the only way I could turn around was to suffer. I had to build calluses in my brain the same way I built calluses on my hands. I saw myself as the weakest person God ever created, but I never blamed God for anything he did to me. So I wanted to change that to be the hardest man ever created. Am I that? I don't know, but you had to have a goal. And my goal when I was sitting there, not going to school, being bullied, being having no self-esteem, my goal was the only person that's gonna turn this person around is me. So I knew in the back of my mind that I could pull off this whatever. Whatever I wanted, I knew I could. I knew that, but I, I was afraid of the work because I wasn't gifted with brains. I wasn't gifted with God-given talent as far as like athleticism. So I knew to get to where I had to go, to be on the same playing field as these men, to even try out for this program, I knew the work was going to be something that I didn't want to even, even attack. So I was just putting it off. It haunted me. That's what I realized for myself was I wanted that comfort zone that everybody looks for, that pat on the back. They don't want to hear all the bad. They want to hear everything that they're doing right. And I realized that's what kept me in this world. That's what kept me in this world of not accomplishing anything. What I did was I became that big, bad, nasty that you don't want to walk into at nighttime. I became the roughest critic in the world on myself. And that's what changed me. I literally saw myself in the mirror. I saw the truth versus saying, you know, my dad did this to me from, you know, from beating me. My life did this to me. My broken foundation did this to me. I took that and said, you know what? Well, some people may help this happen, but now I have to own this. No one's going to come back to save me. No one's going to come back on this couch and say, hey, it's okay. You're going to be okay. No, I'm not. I'm not going to be okay. I had to realize I had to take a stand. I had to make a real stand. And it was painful to look at who I, like who I was, what the world and myself created. It created a, a very lonely, depressed, insecure man that would do anything just to have a friend. And I saw that as very pathetic. When you look at the truth, it becomes very ugly and pathetic. I'm the hardest working guy that, that doesn't talk about it. So basically, I don't take any days off as far as working out. First thing in the morning time is you have to build your confidence. And every day you're constantly gaining and losing confidence. You're never staying the same. So how you build your confidence is, if you like what you see in that mirror, that's how you start your day off. If you wake up and you, and you look fat, you look out of shape, you're not feel good, which is, you know, or you don't feel good inside. So my whole big thing is get up and work out. Shed some calories. Get the adrenals going. Get the mind going. Get all that going. Every day I run. Every day I work out. A lot of people, what they do is they have these, these finish lines. And I have a saying that says, I don't stop when I'm tired, I stop when I'm done. When I was uh, younger, I didn't have any goals. It's not really so much about goals, it's just to-do list, a to-do list. And as a human being, if you don't have a to-do list, you're gonna sit back and just fade away. I didn't care about losing weight. I didn't care about being the fastest person. I didn't care about, I wasn't making the Olympics. I wasn't going to pros. I could barely read and write when I was in a, a junior in high school. I wasn't going anywhere. I saw working out as a way for me to build calluses on my mind. I had to callous over the victim's mentality. I watched these movies. I, you know, I talked about Rocky last time I was on here. I always equated training to mental toughening. Like 
it always looked brutal. People waking up early and doing all these things. And it, looked, it looked horrible. I was like, wow, man, I got to start doing that. Not to get better, bigger, and stronger, but that is what's going to build me. That looks uncomfortable. That looks brutal. And getting up early, I don't want to do that. Some of this long list of things I don't want to do. And through that, I found myself. I'm like, you guys aren't doing this in high school. You guys aren't getting up at five o'clock in the morning, running over here in this golf course. So I started seeing myself very differently than the average human being. I was like, hang on a second. I have something they don't have. And that's when I started to develop these things through working out. It was this great, never ending work ethic. And through work ethic, I developed self-esteem. You have to tap into suffering every day of your life because we have so much scarring that we have to clean up. You have to look at suffering as almost like I look at failure. To succeed, you must fail. In failure and in suffering, all the answers are in there. All the answers to all the test questions, the test is your life. All the answers are in there. You don't have to live in suffering and pain and failure all the time. You have to learn, I need to visit it. Like people hate working out. You're only gonna visit working out maybe an hour a day. 23 other hours of the day, you're not in it. But how you become in shape is you must visit suffering, visit working out one hour a day. Visit suffering one hour a day. Visit your past failures one hour a day. The relationship with it is the answers are in there. Go back in your brain, crack it open while you're alive. Don't wait until you're dead to figure out why you died. Do it while you are living. Go in there, go into the suffering. Go into the pain of your life and say, why did this suck for me so bad? Why am I afraid of all this stuff? Why have I shut down the whole world? I guarantee I'll tell you why you shut down the whole world. It's in these nooks of the suffering within your brain, in the scarring, are all the answers to why you are on the couch feeling sorry for yourself. My reading, my learning, my, my workouts, my, my, my diet. You start neglecting all of that. You neglect one of them. You can, you can neglect all of them a long time. It's gonna haunt you. When you start seeing that, my God, I haven't eaten right in a long time. I haven't been sleeping right in a long time. It can only be one of those things to take you off. I'm very aware of my eating, my sleeping, my disciplines of life. And when I started to get too far away from them, it's a hard stop. And the one thing, that only thing that gets me mad nowadays is that so many people die with untapped potential because they think that someone else is better than them. And they were born not with the greatest tools. You need the ability to grind your ass into a fine powder. And when you're in that fine powder, find a way to build that back up repeatedly. And that's possible. When you come from a small, small town, and you come from a place that a lot of people don't want to come out of it and get out of it, and all you want to do is become somebody, you've got to be able to get out and let your mind see open-mindedness. Because a small town, what it does to you is it closes your mind, completely closes your mind. Not everybody. This isn't everybody, a lot of people. You have to be able to go out there and create open-mindedness. You need space. You need space to see the world. Like a lot of racism, a lot of, a lot of ignorance in the world, it comes from people not being out and seeing other things, seeing other people. That's why we judge so harshly because our minds are so closed to the reality of of life period people don't really understand what that is when you're in the worst environment possible the worst situation possible and everybody's looking like god man i hope this ends and you see that time slows down and you see that you're you're feeling that everybody has that look on their face like god this gotta go i don't want to be here anymore and when i started realizing i started playing mind games and i was like you know what i bet these fuckers are looking at us judging themselves about when they were going through hell week about let me see, I'm looking at Goggins right now. I was better than him. And I was like, okay, okay. You're going to judge me, right? <laughs> All right. So that's what I'm going to do to you. They tell you how you're supposed to feel. You are feeling that way. I was like, uh, don't let these motherfuckers tell you how you're supposed to feel. No, it's day one, motherfucker. This is hour one. So I was getting my Boku all jacked up. I said, we're going to take these motherfuckers souls. So when they had us doing this simple thing, that guys were struggling with, I looked on the instructor's faces and it looked like someone had just f***ed with their soul. And I looked at my guys in my book and I said, hey, guess what? We <laughs> own space in their head. 
We own space. They're gonna think about us tonight. We start fueling off the fact that, man, it takes one second of energy to steal everybody's. And then you have all the energy you need. That's all you need. You need to look at someone's eyes. You know how it is when you fight somebody and you broke that. He's like, oh God, man, I don't wanna go back to the next round. And you feel like, my God, I can fight all day. I can fight all mm. day long. That's what taking souls is. But you have to have the will, the heart, the courage to go that distance when you're exactly jacked up. You have nothing left to give and give more. I want you to, I want you to go there with me. I'm taking you there with me. I'm, I'm a storyteller. I want to take your ass down paradise. Where I, so the house I lived in in Buffalo, New York, that I got my ass beat every day, funny. We lived on Paradise Road. And it was anything but paradise. So I want you to go there with me. You want to learn from me? Let me take your ass home. Let me take you there. So that's the whole thing about it, man. We're, we're scared to dive into our lives. What made us who we are? The beautiful people that we are. We're all jacked up in so many ways. That's the beauty of us. That's the beauty of me. I'm jacked up. But I figured out my own little process on how to get unjacked up and how to, I'm not going to get the same, you know, I'm not going to get the same way you're going to get there. You may get there by going point A to point B. I may go point C to D to E to F, but I'm going to be there the same way you are, just a little harder. And that's how I train my brain. So it's just different. I'm a diff different thinker. Talk about, we want to skip forward to peace. Let's skip all this pain and suffering and misery of real life. Let's cover it over, nice big blanket, and let's find peace. No, sorry, it's not possible. Got to go into that hell hole of life that you have, that fucked you up, and fix it. And that's what I'm here to do. Yeah. You must go to war with yourself before you find peace. So I'm trying to give you tools on how to do that. And I'm not going to sit here and smile and be happy about it. It's a hard journey. It's a real journey. It's a, it's a journey that's going to take you way outside of being comfortable. You'll be very, very uncomfortable. So basically, I start running and I get to about mile 40, mile 50, and I'm feeling pretty good. I get to mile 70 and it was a, the, the worst pain of my life. I sat down in this blue lawn chair at mile 70 and I, my the Ritz crackers after mile 20 became Ritz cracker balls because I wasn't hydrating correctly. I didn't know what to do. I was drinking Mileplex for my nutrition because I couldn't eat these Ritz crackers, have very minimal water if any at all. And I was just dying. So I sat down in this blue lawn chair as I was watching all these runners go around in this circle. I was all dizzy and lightheaded, hadn't gone to the bathroom. It's been about 12 hours. I went 70 miles in about 12 hours, which is good. And I looked at my ex-wife now and I was like, I am, and I started seeing like three of her. And once my body stopped, my mind just went off and I had to go to the bathroom. And the bathroom was like, it's like 20 feet away from me, if that, and I couldn't. When you quit, your mind does this. Once you say, I'm not going to quit, this is the 40%. When you quit, your mind says, we're done. So it doesn't expand. There's no expansion when you quit. When you say, uh-uh, this sucks, I'm drowning, I'm miserable, I'm suffering, I'm broken, but I'm not going anywhere. What happens to your mind is it does this. It says, he's not leaving. We have a lot more, a lot more than we think we have. And all I did was I picked up that fucking shovel and that shovel, I made my own path. And you may have big boulders and they may be getting 200 miles up the road faster than you, but going through this path of life, this journey over here, there may be some days I get up with poopy pants and I'm like, you know what, man, F this man, like, why am I having this, this such a structured life? Why? And I'm like, you know what? I'm good. I'm done with this. And I sit around and I say, okay, so you want to be normal. So you just want to be like everybody else that roams the world, not knowing the power that's in them. Being fine with being mediocre. I'm like, fuck that, man. People think that my knees are bad from a lot of running, and they're wrong. I, I wasn't born healthy. I wasn't born with some great body alignment, some great, you know, I have sickle cell, I have all kinds of health issues. I had a choice to make. And the choice was, you know, growing up, okay, this hurts, that hurts. We can just sit down and do nothing. Or we can see how far we can push the human body. So on that journey, as I started getting more and more into my mind and start realizing that while what I'm capable of doing, 
my mind got stronger. So the so the pain in my knees, while it sucked, I've been doing it for so long. It was like it became my new norm. Like, okay, my knees hurt. And I call it like, um, stop feeling sorry for yourself. But you sometimes have to ignore your feelings. For me, I, I made a decision. And my decision was to be the best person I could. I basically, a lot of mornings I wake up and say, F your feelings. And that doesn't mean like, don't take it literally, F your feelings. But sometimes you have to go beyond what you're feeling. And my knees were, F but guess what? I wanted to run. And I knew that, okay, you can get knee replacements, this and that. Like I said, it wasn't because of I ran too much. People always want to say, oh man, you ran so much so you f your body. You know, you don't want to be like David Goggins. I hear it all the time. You don't want to be like David Goggins. I study the darkness. You find no fucking answers in the light. None. It's too happy. It's too nice. And, and we're not, we don't need to be taught how to live in happiness. Don't, that, that just comes naturally to us. Happy moments. But the dark times, man, you can't, and you can't get there unless you put yourself there. Life will take you there. But when you get into those dark moments, that's why people, how are you able to write like this, man? I go to such places in my mind and I study the darkness. Like, it's not just physical. When I was growing up, and I saw my mom getting beat and I got beat and I was some stuttering little black kid in all white school and I'm on stage and I got to say one line, one line in front of 15 people and I walk off stage kind of like stutter. All those insecurities and all those things, man, I used to go home and cry and be like, my God, man, I'm, I'm, hang on, man. As I got older, we got to study. The only way we're going to get through this is if we study it. So every time I'm in a dark moment and life's up around me, whether it be physical or just life, I get in it, man, with a pen and paper. I'm like, okay, this sucks. I can feel like I'm losing my sh Let's can study this. You can't fit discipline into that. You can't fit structure. You can't fit consistency. You can't fit the grind. And then when you try, it just gets overrun by the clutter in your fucked up mental garage. I got to a point in my life where I realized this is life. And so I move on past things real quick. So people are like, oh my God, what are you gonna do, David, if you can't run? I'll swim, or I'll go to college, or I'll do something else. Like, this isn't my life. I'm very aware how quick life can take shit from you, and I've always prepared my mind for the next chapter. And what happened with me was I started this thing called front-loading. So when I was young, I used to be a little piece of shit. You know, like, oh, I'm not good enough, I can't do this, I can't do that. But the second I got my head out of my ass, and I realized, man, you can achieve a lot of shit if you get off your ass and you start moving and you start motivating yourself. So I became a self-motivator. So I started front-loading. Every time I'm in a bad situation, I study it. And that's the only reason I do half the shit I do is I'm studying this shit because I know that I never thought I was going to be writing books and trying to help people get better. But I was always trying to do it because I knew I sucked. And so when you know you're trying to get somewhere, you know you suck, you know that you, you believe that you're a born loser, you are taking snapshots, man. Like, you know, you, you see something on your phone, like, oh man, I'm gonna take a snapshot of that. I do that in my mind. So when I get in these moments where I'm like, okay, wow, that's good knowledge right there, man. I snapshot it, because I know that I can use that later. I can use this, because I'm not out there just, I'm not, most people, they go out and they run, and they go out and they do, and they're like, oh, this is beautiful. Look at mountains and the shit. No, I don't like it. My body hurts. I'm hurting. How do we get through this? It's a lab. It's my mental lab. And, I, and so when I come home, I'm not forgetting it. And the second, like every day I get done running or every day I get through work and every day I get through studying, whatever it is that brings me to that place of knowledge, I come home and, and that book was mostly written on a scratch piece of paper in hand. So I come home from, from running and I write everything out. I write everything out, all those things. And as I'm running, I'm talking about it. So all these things that pop in my head as I continue to run, I'm going through it. I'm starting to layer it down. I'm starting to break it down into, okay, that happened, okay, now, now let's layer this. Because that's just not how it happened. It just didn't happen that way. What led up to this? And so it becomes me by myself in school. I'm literally going to school right now and I'm learning. So when I come home, I write it out. And then I'm able to write out and I'm able to think about it and say, okay, oh, this is good. This will help me later on. And then it becomes what it is now. 
I did a lot outside the military. I've made money. I've, I've done almost every race out there, hard race in the world. I've broken pull-up records. I've done a lot. Of, so when these bad times come, and also, not, and not only that, like work your ass off so, so you can enjoy. Yeah, yeah, you're taking a shot. You know, you, you may not live to be old, but what if you do? And you worked your ass off when you were able, and you were able to get up early, able to grind. If you front load it properly, the back half of your life is money. And that's what I did. You're alone. You're alone. You may have a shrink you're going to, you may have a best friend you're going to, but there's 24 hours in the day where you're alone in this brain. And your brain is talking to you in all kinds of ways. And it wants to control you and pull you in these different pockets. If you can't control your own brain and your brain controls you, you're fucked. You gotta tell your brain where you wanna go and how you wanna go and how you wanna get there. You gotta control it. If not, it's over. You have to be quiet in your mind. Get away from people. We love being around people. We love talking. We love parties. We love all that. It's okay to be alone. It's also okay to be unhappy. I put my phone away. I put shit away. And I go dark. I go dark a lot. And it's because I have to find out. I'm on a journey of life. And we all have a different journey. And I want to be in my fucking pine box. And I believe your spirit lives forever. It has to. It's too powerful. No way in hell that thing just dies when you die. I want to be able to look back on my life when I'm all dead and be so fucking proud of myself forever. This is all temporary to me. I want to be forever proud of who I was as a man and change who I used to be. The liar, the insecure guy. I want to be proud. When I, if I die now, I want to look at myself and say, proud of myself. It's okay to be unhappy sometimes, man. It's okay to say, you know what, man? I'm fucked up. So you got to go to the truth first. Who are you? Get really accountable and say, okay, who am I? What's the truth about me? Get to that dark place in your mind. Figure out, it may take months, it may take years. Figure out your purpose. Figure out what you want to be in life. Things I'm trying to find more of myself. And the only way I can find more is to silence the world out as much as I can because it's, it's, it's getting busier every day. It's getting faster. And the faster it gets, the more you are missing who the f you are. You have to go dark. You have to be quiet in your mind. Get away from people. We love being around people. We love talking. We love, we love parties. We love all that. It's okay to be alone. It's also okay to be unhappy. It's okay to be unhappy sometimes, man. It's okay to say, you know what, man? I'm, I'm f***ed up. So you got to go to the truth first. Who are you? Get, get really accountable. And say, okay, who am I? What's the truth about me? But you have to go into those dark chambers that we often shut off. And you got to open them up. You got to open up and fight that fucking demon. Get in there. Talk to that motherfucker and say, what's up? Get to that dark place in your mind. Figure out. It may take months. It may take years. Figure out your purpose. Figure out what you want to be in life. And then from there, okay, I have my purpose. It's easier to accept the fact that I'm just not good enough. I wasn't made to do that. And yeah, some of us can't be LeBron fucking James. But I'll tell you right now, man, we can do a lot of when it comes to this pure arm guts and willpower and getting through shit, we have a lot more with a lot more than we think we have. And all I did was I picked up that fucking shovel and that shovel, I made my own path. And you may have big boulders and they may be getting 200 miles up the road faster than you, but going through this path of life, this journey over here that you make yourself, that's incredibly difficult. When it comes out the other end of that mother, some glorious shit, you can't even explain to people. How you gain mental toughness, how you become the person you want to be, is constantly facing the things that you don't want to face. If you constantly run away from things that you don't want to face, how is there growth? Because that's all life is, is one big game. You have to learn and have control over your own thoughts. If you can't control your own thoughts and you have negative thoughts in there, you have to make a negative a positive to get through everything in life. You're going to die never even trying to reach your full potential. And how's that going to feel? It should have been you. This was the life that you were supposed to live. But you didn't try to see that that was supposed to be my life. But because I didn't try hard enough, because I didn't put forth every single bit of an ounce of pressure in my body into being better. They ended up being a 300 pound guy that made a thousand dollars a month and I was fine there.
The second we put ourselves amongst the uncommon people, we don't like that feeling, that challenge and feeling that of, of that person who's waking up at 3.30 in the morning and saying, hey, we're going for a run. We don't like that challenge. We like that person who says, hey, you know what, man, I don't feel good today, man. And they say, oh, it's okay, brother. We'll take a day off, man. We'll get a pizza and watch the game. We like that. We, we love that feeling. Why? Because you understand, man, we're good, bro. We don't want that motherfuckers like this. Hey, man, no, bro. Get your shit on, man. Stop being a punk. We don't want that in our lives. We don't want that person who's constantly challenging our weaknesses. We want that person who's constantly, you know, making us feel nice and good and secure in ours. That's the mediocrity of life. We want to be the best amongst the average people. People wonder, how do you stay hungry all the time? A lot of guys who graduate buds, graduate this, graduate that, they get comfortable. They wonder why I'm getting weak, man. I don't know, I lost my edge. What's going on? Because once you hit the top of the mountain, guess what happened? I'm good. I'm never happy and satisfied with one thing I do. I don't believe in taking days off because your mentality is just feeling sorry for yourself. Uh, I deserve this or I've earned that mentality. And that's what I was saying to myself. Today's self-talk was horrible. I had to stop caring what people thought about me. I walked around and I put these people on a pedestal. Everybody was better than me. So I can't tell you anything about me because you're going to judge me and I'm going to feel even worse than what I am. When it becomes something that steady just pecks at you all day long, no matter what you're doing, I could be talking to you in this voice at the same time, like, what are you doing? What are you doing, man? You're a loser. Where, where are you going, man? This is, this is what you could do your whole life? So it'd be talking to me as I'm talking to everybody. It was almost like I had, I had two people. And I'm like, good God, just right. shut up. I sure. want to be comfortable. I want to be left alone. I, I don't want to face all these things that, that life gave me but I don't respect a lot of people. Cause how am I gonna respect you if you're not grinding every day? And I don't mean working out, getting to the gym, really going out there and grinding. So if you don't know how I'm living my life, how am I gonna respect you? So you have to be a hard worker, period, dot. So if you're working hard every day, that's where I gain respect for you. Now you have an opinion in my eyes. If I had to walk, I had to walk. It just became just a process of, Grinding and grinding and grinding is not even a good word for it. It's not even a good word for it. Just going further and further. And then when I got through running, I go to the bike, I go to the pool. If I got tired somewhere, my legs were tired, I, I go to the gym and I developed this crazy workout where I was doing volume two, 300 reps of like very lightweight. My workout routine in the gym became sick. In a position where you're just out of sorts, where you can't swim and you're drowning. Well, you're drowning. You're drowning in life. But you say, you know what, man? I'm going to figure out how to backstroke or something. I've been in three hell weeks, ranger school, overcome so many obstacles in my life. This last 30 miles of this race is when I realized a human being is not so human anymore. We have the ability to go in such a space. If you're willing to suffer, and I mean suffer, your brain and your body, once connected together, can do anything. And this 30 miles was the life-changing moment. I was out of it. I was in the worst pain in my entire life. I was, to me, on the brink of death. And I was able to chunk this 30 damn miles into small pieces. I was so driven, and I'm not, not going to say motivated because motivation is crap. Motivation comes and goes. When you're driven, whatever's in front of you will get destroyed. I sat in this chair and I was so driven to succeed in this race. This became a personal thing. This became me against this race, me against me. It just became something that I took so violently personal. And I broke this thing down into small pieces. I said, okay, I gotta get nutrition. I gotta be able to stand up. So I went through all these small steps and I, I was able to stand up. And then from standing up, I was literally walking around with my wife at the time. And she goes, you're not going to make the time. I got to mile 81. And the second she said that I'm not going to make the time, I ran the last 19 miles nonstop. And people may listen to this and say, this guy is sadistic. He's crazy. He's... No, if you know how I came up, you realize I was just a scared kid that found drive and passion to be something much better than what he thought he was. I have to become someone in this world. 
or I'm no good for anybody. It comes from a disgusting place of not being fulfilled in your life, of afraid of dying, having never accomplished anything. That's a fear that some people run away from, that people don't want to face. When you have a real fear of dying and being just another person, that I live to pay the bills, I made a $1,000 a month. This is my life, I spray for cockroaches, man. If that makes you feel good, that's great. It didn't make me feel good. I wanted to the first time in my life, after 26 years, it was 24, 25, wherever I was, I wanted to feel good about myself.